Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be discussing a case that has captivated true crime enthusiasts for decades. The Vending Machine Killer. In 1985, a serial killer struck fear into the hearts of the public in Japan by poisoning drinks and leaving them at vending machines for unsuspecting victims to find. 12 people lost their lives as a result of these poisonings and yet, despite extensive investigations, the killer's identity remains a mystery to this day. But what makes this case so intriguing? For one, the killer was able to evade capture for so long despite the efforts of law enforcement and while their motive behind these crimes remains unknown it's clear that the killer was calculating and meticulous in their planning they chose to poison drinks that was left at vending machines knowing that someone would eventually come along and consume them and with a pay it forward culture prevailing at the time it's no wonder that so many people fell victim to the killer's scheme. As we delve into the story of the vending machine killer, we'll be exploring the timeline of the murders, examining the evidence that has been gathered over the years, and considering the various theories about the killer's identity. Who was this mysterious figure? And will we ever know the truth about what happened in 1985? Join us as we attempt to unravel the clues and find out. Imagine walking past a row of vending machines, the icy cold drinks inside beckoning to you on a hot day, your first almost tangible. You reach for your wallet and slide in a few coins, eagerly awaiting the satisfying thud of a bottle hitting the bottom of the machine. But as you reach for your drink, you notice another one abandoned in the dispensing slot, or perhaps left on top of the machine. Would you be tempted to quench your thirst with this unexpected find, or would you hesitate, unsure of who might have touched it or why it was left there? In 1985, 12 people in Japan faced this same dilemma, and tragically, all of them chose to accept the abandoned drinks. Little did they know, these beverages had been laced with the toxic herbicide paraquat, a substance with no known antidote capable of causing acute nausea, lung congestion and ultimately death. The person responsible for this deadly act remains unknown to this day, earning the moniker of the vending machine killer. While the vending machine killer's identity remains a mystery, it is known that they use paraquat as their weapon of choice. This herbicide is highly effective at destroying plant life and is often used by law enforcement to eradicate marijuana plants. Its toxic nature means that it must be handled with caution, as even a small amount ingested or coming into contact with open wounds can have severe consequences. It is this toxicity that made it a perfect tool for the vending machine killer who was able to poison their victims without them realising it until it was too late. There are many reasons why so many people might have been willing to consume abandoned drinks from vending machines in 1985 in Japan. For starters, there was a promotion ongoing for a new vitamin rich beverage called Ornament C and certain fortunate consumers who made purchases from the machines would get a free bottle. Ornament C was a present in many of the poisoned beverages, though not all of them. In addition to this marketing campaign, there was also a culture of pay it forward at the time, with people often purchasing two drinks and leaving one behind for someone else to enjoy. The choice of 12 persons, the drinks they discovered that were left abandoned, may have been less shocking as a result. However, the vending machine killer was aware of this and took advantage of it, intentionally leaving behind poison drinks in vending machines for unsuspecting victims to find. A 45 year old truck driver who found an ornament C bottle on top of a vending machine in Fukuyama Hiroshima was the first victim of the vending machine killer whose dread filled reign of terror in 1985 lasted for many months. He consumed the drink and died on May the 2nd with traces of paraquat being found in his vomit during the forensic examination. At this point there was nothing to suggest that his death was a result of deliberate poisoning and it was thought to be an isolated incident. However in September of the same year Several more cases of paraquat poisoning were reported, with eight people dying after consuming poison drinks from the vending machines. By October, the number of victims had reached 12, with the last known victim being a 27 year old woman. There have been many speculations over the years regarding the identity and motivation of the vending machine killer. One theory that has been suggested is that the killer was a rival company trying to sabotage the success of Ornament C. Ornament C was a vitamin enriched drink that was popular in Japan at the time of the murders. The killer seemed to be targeting ornament C beverages and the marketing campaign for the drink may have played a role in the high number of ornament C drinks that were found to be poisoned. It's possible that a rival company saw the success of ornament C as a threat and decided to take matters into their own hands in order to eliminate the competition. Another theory that has been suggested is that the killer had a personal grudge against the ornament C company or was seeking revenge for some perceived wrongdoing. It's possible that the killer had a personal connection to the company or 
felt that they had been wronged in some way and decided to take revenge. This theory could explain the focus on ornament C drinks, as the killer may have seen the company as their target. However, there is also a possibility that the killer had no personal connection to ornament C company and simply saw the marketing campaign and pay it forward culture as an opportunity to poison unsuspected victims. In this case, the focus on ornament C drinks may have simply been a coincidence and the killer may have been looking for an opportunity to poison people. There have also been theories that the killer was motivated by some kind of political or ideological agenda. It's possible that the killer saw the vending machine poisonings as a way to make a statement or draw attention to this particular issue. This hypothesis, however, is just conjecture because there isn't any hard evidence to back it up. Overall, there are many theories about the identity and motive of the vending machine killer, but none of them have been conclusively proven. Are you as fascinated by the vending machine killer as we are? If so, we have a challenge for you. Share your thoughts and theories about the cases with us and let's see if we can solve this mystery together. But that's where you come in. We want to hear your ideas about who the vending machine killer might be and what their motives could have been. Maybe you have had a hunch about the killer's identity or a theory about their motive. Whatever it is, we want to hear it. And if you're really interested in this case, don't forget to keep an eye out for any new developments or updates. Who knows? you might even come across some information that could help to crack this case wide open. So don't be shy, share your thoughts and theories with us in the comments and let's see if we can solve this mystery together. Thank you for watching our video about the curious tale of the chilling story of the vending machine killer. Don't forget to share this video, like, comment and subscribe for more chilling tales, unsolved mysteries and haunted histories. Until next time, stay safe.